strains cannot be invented. And if they fulfill some equations, the strains can be integrated. That's the two key concepts that you can get from here. OK, so let's consider the infinitesimal strain case. So we have a tensor, second order tensor. So the matrix of components of this tensor is 3 times 3, but it's symmetric, right? It's symmetric, so there are six different functions here. And I invent them. I want to invent them. The point is that, OK, I have to invent them so that they are representative of uh, the strains of a given file displacement field. So I want to be able to uh, get this displacement field. Displacement field that comes out from these equations. These are the equations that says, how much is epsilon xx, the component x of the infinitesimal strains? We saw, uh, we have it in the, form, in the formula, that this is derivative of ux with respect to x. Epsilon y is derivative of ui with respect to y, etc. Epsilon xy involve this derivative of ux with respect to y and ui with respect to x, etc. So these are the three partial differential equations that should be integrable. Please recall that, uh, remember that this is the data, and the unknown is ux, y, uz. The goal that we are trying to achieve is the obtention of these uh, three functions ux, y, z. So I have six partial differential equations, first order, and only three unknowns. The system is overdetermined. And that means that in general, if I invent these uh, strains, I won't have the possibility to obtain a continuous displacement field, so representative of the motion of a continuum medium, which is solution of this strain field. So my goal is now, obtain what are the conditions that have to fulfill these uh, strain fields invented in order that they are compatible, so that they produce a, strain, a displacement field. Okay? And the process is the same. I won't do it. I just introduced the previous example to present to you the mechanism of obtention of that, because now it's a little more mathematically heavier, but the concept is the same. What do I do? Look, I take these six equations, and I take first derivative of every one of them with respect to the three coordinates. Okay? So I would obtain a system where I would have first derivative of, F of all these and second derivatives of all these. Right? Okay. Uh, the point is that that's not enough. If I do just take the first derivative of these six equations, then I obtain a system where still I have more equations than unknowns, in the sense that I cannot eliminate the ux, ui, uz, and the derivative of ux, ui, uz with respect to that. So, well, that's not enough, but I can repeat the procedure. Instead of taking the first derivative, I take the second derivatives. So I take the every derivative, every every equation of that, I take the second derivatives, all possible second derivatives. And then what do I get? That's what we have here. So I take the first equation, the first equation here, and I take all possible second derivatives of this equation with respect, that means x squared, y, squ uh, y squ squared, z squared, xy. By the way, I don't consider yx because it's the same. xz. I don't talk about zx because the same, yz. So finally, from the first equation, this I can take one, two, three, four, five, six derivatives. So I obtain six new equations, right? From the second equation, other six. From the sixth equation, another six. So finally, how many equations I would obtain by differentiating this system with respect to all second order possibilities? 6 times 6, 36 equations. OK, these are the equations. What would be, so to speak, the unknowns of this system? Well, in these equations, there will be derivatives, second order derivatives of ux, ui, uz, which in turn were initially already derived with respect to, differentiated with respect to x, y, and z. 
So finally, in this system, there appear third, third order differentials of u derivatives of x, ux, ui, and z. So that's what I have here. In this system, which is here, for instance, here is the system just for some equation. For instance, by differentiation of xx, I have that equation, that, 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 that. I could do the same with respect epsilon yy -Y and epsilon zz. By differentiation of epsilon yz, for example, I obtain that, 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 that. I could do also for all the others, x -Y, uh, epsilon xy, epsilon xz. So finally, these are 6 times 3, 18, plus 6 times 3, 18, 36. And look, at these equations, I have, as I told you, first, all the second, same second derivatives of epsilon xx, epsilon xy, epsilon yy, and all possible derivatives, third derivatives, these are third derivatives of ux, ui, uc. Okay? So the point is, in these 36 equations that I haven't inserted here, just because not, not travel you, so uh, how many derivatives there are? We can count them. For instance, there will be all the third derivative of ux. How many of third derivatives uh, of ux there are? Look, that will be derivative of x3, x2y, x2z, y3, y2x. Look, I haven't placed here yx2 because the, the, uh, here, because it already appeared here, okay? So i3, i2x, i2z, z3, z2x, z2y, and finally xyz. This is the all possible derivatives, excluding the cross derivative. For instance, x squared is not here, z, uh, z y squared is not here, because in virtue of the equal derivatives, it's the same. So how many are there here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's for ux. So 10 for ux, 10 for uy, 10 for uz. There will be 10 derivatives here. OK? So in these equations, there will be 10, 10, 10, 10, sorry, no, 30, sorry, 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30. In these, how many? 36 equations. There will be 30, three derivatives of like that, OK? So there are 36 equations, 30 derivatives. I could manipulate these equations, eliminating from them the 30 third order derivatives of displacement. And the remaining, after excluding them from that, there will remain six equations where there appear combinations of these terms like that, combinations of the second derivatives of the strains. OK? These combinations of the second derivative of the strains that come out from eliminating from these 36 equations, these 36, 30 and nones, then are those. So you can just take these equations here and just eliminate from them the uh, three third order derivatives, and you obtain these equations. These are equations that have to be fulfilled if the system is compatible because to obtain them, I've just differentiated the original equations, the original equations. So finally, uh, these are necessary conditions to be fulfilled for the invented strain fields if I want that they are, these strain fields is integrable. So, Look, then I can just think, looking a little bit at the structure of these equations, that these call that SXX, because no XX appears here. YY is the only term that doesn't appear here, ZZ, etc. So give a name to any of these six equations, and consider that these are components of a certain second order tensor, S, and then realize that these equations can be expressed just in a compact manner of epsilon symbolic rotation nabla, which is a vector. Take the rotation of that. This is vector s. And this vector s, 
So this double rotation here means that second order differentiation takes place here, okay? Which are there, okay? This tensor, second order tensor has to be zero, okay? These equations, these equations, you have them here in the formula, look. These are the equations. These equations you will need, maybe, some point, sometimes, you will need, you will need to know that, that these are the compatibility equations. They are here, okay? Okay. So, well, that, that's, not, that's not that important. What is important is that these equations are proven to be not only necessary, but also sufficient conditions for integration of the, for compatibility of a second order strain field. So that means that if I invent six functions of a space, and I consider that these six functions define a certain strain field, if these functions fulfill these equations, fulfill these equations, then they can be integrated. That, that means that it can be obtained a displacement field whose first derivatives combined in that way provide this given strain field. If I do not obtain them, which I could be requested in an exam, for instance, that means either that this strain field don't fulfill, doesn't fulfill the, 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 the compatibility equations, or that in the integration process I made a mistake. But if it fulfills the compatibility equations, I, I, I should be able to obtain the com complete uh, displacement field. So the compatibility equations are, 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 are important. You know, it's not something which is negligible. Maybe that's the first time that you hear about them, but that's something that play a role, and we go back to them in some moments of the course. And we go, go back to them in different expressions. For instance, there are different compact equations for expressing the compatibility equations. For instance, that, that equations here, in terms of the, you know, the permutation operator. And these equations here, this is a very compact way that we see later on. Look, I recall that comma means differentiated, right? Differentiation. So that means derivative of epsilon ij with respect xk with respect to xl. I recall you that, okay? Comma means derivative. So this is something of that, derivative of some x, epsilon ij with respect to epsilon k, epsilon l, okay? In that case, ij will be z, x will be, k will be one, so, uh, sorry, x, j will be three, uh, j will be one, and l will be two, okay? And there is, so these are forms that we just recall them, that whenever we see that, whenever we see that, these are second order partial differential equations to be fulfilled by the strain field in order that it's a real infinitesimal strain field.